There's been a 150% rise in the Chinese government's persecution of Christians in just one year. We don't carry arms. We will not carry arms. We don't teach carrying arms. But we can call on God. Our God is bigger than human ammunition. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Fifth Seal, episode 44. I am your host, Norm the Master's Dog Dunham, aka the Evangelical Norm. The Fifth Seal is a podcast to bring prayer and awareness to our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted because of their faith in Jesus Christ. Every year I count down the top 50 countries on Open Doors USA's World Watch list of countries where uh, Christians endure the most persecution. So twice a month from January to October, I count down from 50 to number 31, and then throughout the month of November, which about 10 years ago I deemed to be Persecuted Church Awareness Month because I didn't know who to go to to make it official, so I just did it myself. Through the month of November, I count down once every day through that month from 30 to number 1, uh, it is a countdown, which is why the episode numbers go backwards. Our last episode was episode 45. This week we're at episode 44. Two weeks from now, we will be at 43. On through the end of November when we get to number one, which is the worst country in the world for Christians to live in based on the persecution they endure because of their faith in Jesus Christ. So it's a little background on the podcast for those who are new. Again, continuing to get more and more subscribers. So Thank you to you guys who like the videos, comment on the videos, share the videos. Uh, if you know anybody who's willing to take 10 to 15 minutes a day, uh, again, throughout the year, twice a month, and then every day through the month of November, to join us to, as we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world, you can invite them over to the Fifth Seal page on Facebook or to the Evangelical Norm channel on YouTube, or they can get the podcast, just look for the Fifth Seal Anywhere where they download their audio podcast, they can get it. If they don't have time to sit and watch the video, they can put it in their earbuds and take it with them and still join us as we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world. So that being said, it is Wednesday, uh, April 13th, and this is our update on the persecuted church around the world. This from Morningstar News. Muslim Sheik poisoned after converting to Christianity. A former Sheikh Islamic teacher in eastern Uganda was poisoned on Saturday, April 2nd, shortly after his wife learned he had converted to Christianity, he said. Hayer Sadiki, 56, of Majidi Uthuman at Na Nawanjofu village, Butalasia district, said from his hospital bed that he put his faith in Christ on March 27th after, after several months of discussions with a Christian pastor. After he declined to observe the Islamic rituals of Ramadan, his wife noticed him praying in the name of Christ, he said. She, re quote, she realized that I had converted to Christianity. She questioned me because of the mode of my praying. I told her that I had believed in Esau, which is Jesus, unquote, Sadiqi said. His wife had studied the Quran at Bugembe Islamic Institute and knew verses about punishment for apostasy. And she left the room and began phoning Muslim leaders, he said. Then she returned and started preparing supper. Quote, after 30 minutes, a lady who is a neighbor arrived and went to the kitchen, and after a short while, she left, unquote, he said. His pastor told Morningstar News that Sadiqi suffered convulsions and vomiting after eating. The former sheik phoned him, and the pastor went to Sadiqi's house and took him to a hospital. Quote, as we arrived at the hospital, his condition worsened. He started having diarrhea with blood, nausea, vomiting, and severe abdominal pain, unquote, the pastor said. Initially, Sadiqi was diagnosed with food poisoning, and doctors began treating him for tomain poisoning. His wife and three children, however, were not affected by the same food, and Sadiqi did not respond to medications as his conditions grew worse, the pastor said. Further tests indicated his food was tainted with a toxic substance related to organophosphate insecticides used to kill rats. Quote, he had lost some amount of blood, the quote unquote, the pastor said. 
Quote, then I rang his wife. As I began asking about the sheik and introducing myself, she was so annoyed and started abusing me for converting her husband. She said she did not want to be identified with him because he had become an infidel and that she was leaving him and going back to her people, that her husband deserved death for forsaking Islam, and that she didn't want to relate with an infidel, unquote. She then hung up the phone. The pastor also phoned Sadiqi's sister-in-law, who told him she was very bitter, that the family had incurred a great loss from the sheikh leaving Islam and leadership of the mosque, and that they wanted nothing to do with him. Quote, I have given caution to nurses and doctors not to allow any person to see the patient without his consent, because I felt they might come and further harm him, unquote, the pastor said. Sadiqi's wife has left with their three children, ages 16, 10, and 6. The assault was the latest of many instances of persecution of Christians in Uganda, the Morning Star News has documented. Uganda's constitution and other laws provide for religious freedom, including the right to propagate one's faith and convert from one's faith to another. Muslims make up no more than 12% of Uganda's population, with high concentrations in the eastern areas of the country. So again, we just see more and more of this. This is like almost a, as soon as the wife found out that... Uh, this man, uh, Mr. Siddiqui, had, had left the faith, had left Islam, had become a Christian. She immediately put into plans and, and poisoned her own husband. Um, so again, this is just another example of what Christians in, in cor, in, incur in these different areas uh, when they convert from Islam, especially Islam, to Christianity. So pray for um, Mr. Siddiqui. I, I can't pronounce his first name. Higher. I believe, uh, higher Sadiqi, pray for him, pray for his, uh, recovery, um, that he will find a safe place to worship Christ. Um, and that uh, somehow that God would use this situation, his willingness to endure this persecution because of his faith in Christ, that God would use that to even draw his wife and children to repentance and faith in Christ, that they would be re reunited as a family. And that brings us to our world watch list country for today, which is uh, number 44, Cameroon. So a few facts about Cameroon. The region is Africa. The persecution type is Islamic oppression. The main religion of Cameroon is Christianity. Uh, the persecution level there is very high. The population is 26,614,000 of which 16,366,000 are Christian. So um, little more than half of the country is, is Christian, but still endure persecution. The government is a presidential republic, and the leader is President Paul Bia. So what does persecution look like in Cameroon? While Cameroon is officially a secular country, there are predominantly Muslim areas where ex Islamic extremism is growing in the north. Uh, is growing in the north, the extremist group Boko Haram is a violent presence, abducting, attacking, or killing Christians, as well as disrupting church activities. In other areas, security injunctions have set heavy restrictions on church activities. Strong governance is lacking in Cam Cameroon adding to the vulnerability faced by persecuted Christians. Christians who convert from Islam suffer persecution across Cameroon and are at great risk if they tell anyone about their new faith or if Bibles are discovered in their possession. They face this risk both from the wider community and their immediate family. Women who convert are often forced into marriage with non-Christians, and there are cases of children of Christians in the north being coerced by Muslim relatives to attend Islamic classes. Boko Haram attacks continue to bring grief and destruction. While there was a slight decrease in report, reported incidents of violence, it remains at an extreme level. The spread of Islamic extremist violence in Cameroon has, been affected, has also affected church life, with security injunctions and displaced believers among reasons why churches are unable to operate and flourish. Christians in the far north of Cameroon are most vulnerable to Islamic extremist violence, but the risk of persecution is also growing in the northwest and southwest, partly due to weak governance and insecurity. So prayer points for Cameroon. Pray that Cameroon's government will take concrete measures to protect vulnerable communities. 
Pray church leaders in the far north will receive God's wisdom and strength as they minister to the persecuted, displaced, and traumatized, and ask God's discernment for local Open Doors partners as they determine and, int and implement ways to serve the persecuted church. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for this time we have to just come together and bring awareness to our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted because of their faith in Christ. We thank you that you have provided uh, the social media uh, platform that we use to uh, communicate across vast distances. We can come together uh, across oceans and even across the span of time as many people will watch this video later and join their voices with us as we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world. Lord, we lift up uh, Hayer Siddiqui, uh, pray that you would uh, give him a quick recovery from the poisoning that he uh, experienced from his wife. Lord, that, that you would use his, his witness, the, the willingness to endure persecution because of his faith in you to draw his wife, his children, and those around him to a place of repentance and faith, that you would be glorified in that situation as he recovers and you, you would give him a boldness to continue to share the gospel with those around him in the same way as he was a leader in a, a mosque there, Lord, that you would raise him up as a leader in the Christian church in that area. Lord, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Cameroon. We pray that the government there will take uh, concrete measures to prevent, protect the vulnerable communities like Christians, um, that, that laws would be enacted and enforced uh, to prevent persecution of, of Christians and others who leave Islam and uh, leave their faith and that they would not be persecuted by those who would seek to do harm to them. Lord, we pray for the church leaders in the north, that they, you would give them wisdom, strength, boldness, and courage to continue to proclaim the gospel and that they could minister to those who are persecuted and displaced and traumatized in the area. Lord, and that, uh, that you would just use all of this to bring people to repentance and faith in you. Um, and we do ask for discernment for the local Open Doors partners as they determine and implement ways to serve the persecuted church in that area. And again, Father, we just thank you that we can, um, we have the freedom to, to lift up our brothers and sisters around the world, that we have access to, um, to social media, to internet, to all the things that we have uh, that you've given to us, Lord, that we can use these things to, to lift up, to pray for, and to bring awareness to the persecution that our brothers and sisters endure because of their faith in you. Um, and Lord, and again, we pray that in all these things that you would be glorified because it is for your glory and in your name that we pray these things, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you again, guys, for taking the time out to watch the video. I'm sorry that you have to watch me squirm. I've, I've got a, a shoulder issue that I'm trying to deal with. So dealing with some pain as we do this, but still doesn't, uh, doesn't even come close to the pain that our brothers and sisters are dealing with because of their faith in Christ. So continue to pray for them. Uh, again, invite anybody that you know that might be willing to join us as we pray for our brothers and sisters. Fifth Seal page on Facebook, Evangelical Norm Network, or just search for the Fifth Seal anywhere they get their audio podcasts. Um, they can take it with them and listen while they're on the go. So appreciate all of you who have done so, who have liked, shared, subscribed. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, get all the content that is released here on the Evangelical Norm channel. Um, thank you one more time. And as always, preach the gospel at all times. Use words. They're necessary. And until next time, Soli Deo Gloria.